Hey everybody, it's Thorpian, and before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to say if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like on this video because that would help me out a lot. Alright, so today's video is going to be about how to get from mining level 1 to 20 as fast as possible. Now when I tested this method, it took me about an hour and a half-ish, maybe two hours, something like that, which isn't too bad in my opinion. So it's going to cover two different kinds of... Um, ways to do this. The first one is going to be if you do have access to the bazaar. The second one is going to be if you don't have access to the bazaar. Um, so please skip ahead to the portion that's relevant to you if you do not have access to the bazaar. Now, if you're on a profile that can go to the bazaar but hasn't yet, I would highly recommend checking out my how to unlock the bazaar guide because it'll get you started on mining and it'll get you unlock the bazaar in 90 minutes or less. Anyway, Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do to start mining is to make around 3,300 coins. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this if you don't have access to the bazaar or if you don't want to get access to the bazaar yet. The best way to do that is going to be to wheat farm and to sell it to the NPC. Uh, that's one of the quick ways to get 3,000 coins. Now, what you're going to do with those coins is you're going to go to the librarian over here you're going to buy 110 of these XP bottles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and buy two stacks, which is going to be obviously a little more than 3,300 coins. You're going to go to the mine merchant and you're going to buy two gold ingots. And then you're going to travel to your island and you're going to make a shovel. A shovel, but I thought we were mining, Thorpian. Yes, well, turns out the fastest way to get mining XP is to make a shovel. So you're going to make a golden shovel and you're going to go to the enchanter at the hub and you're going to enchant it with efficiency five. So that's this guy right here, the librarian. You're going to hit this enchanting table, pop in your shovel, and you're going to put efficiency five on your shovel. And what that's going to allow you to do is you're going to then be able to go to the desert as long as you have farming five, which you should from the wheat you did. And if not, it takes about 30 seconds to get it. It's very easy. Um, so you're going to go over here to the farming islands or the barn. And then you're going to pop your way up to the desert settlement. Whee! And you're just going to mine sand. And the reason we're going to do this is because sand gives 3 XP per and golden shovel with efficiency 5 lets you insta-break it. So this is going to give you quite a bit of XP. Um, as you can see, I'm actually getting 5.6 because I have a silverfish pet equipped, which we'll talk about later in the guide. But for now, uh, this is sufficient. You just go here and you break sand until you're mining level 12. Now at mining level 12, you start to be able to actually do interesting things with mining that involve, well mining. So once you hit level 12, you're going to go back to the hub and you are going to go to the bazaar if you have it. Now remember, this portion of the guide is for people with the bazaar. If you don't have access to the bazaar, you don't want access to the bazaar, you can't get access to the bazaar, please skip ahead to the portion that is about that. So then you're going to buy 10 each of enchanted gold. You're going to buy 10 enchanted redstone and 10 enchanted lapis from the bazaar, and it's going to cost you about... Uh, yeah, carry the one? Like 20k, give or take. Maybe a little less, even. Maybe more like 10 or 15k. So again, I would highly recommend you have access to the bazaar um, for the, the, you know, this next step. So you're going to grab your 10 enchanted gold, 10 enchanted redstone, and 10 enchanted lapis. Now at the time of this guide, those are the cheapest options. Um, there may be alternatives, but I kind of doubt it. And you're gonna go to the gold mine, which you will have unlocked by hitting mining level one. And then you're gonna continue traveling in this direction, and you're gonna get to the deep caverns, which you will have unlocked already with mining level five. So we're just gonna zippity doo da right to the deep caverns. And you are going to make your way through the deep caverns and get to the Dwarven Emissary. Now the reason you want to do this is because the next step of the guide will require access to the Dwarven Mines. 
So we're going to make our way through the Lapis Cave. And I'm going to show you the fastest way to make your way through these caves right now, just because I have always gotten lost here, so I highly recommend um, that you do it. If you've never been here before, you really should talk to the lift operator in order to be able to save your progress on the way down and try to avoid the mobs. The redstone pigmen aren't aggressive unless you attack them or are carrying redstone, so don't do that. Well, I guess you will be doing that. <laughs> Put it in your ender chest. Oops. As you can see, I get lost every single time. You're going to want to through this gap. And you're going to make your way, and you're going to keep going, keep going, and now you're going to be in the slime hill or the emerald zone. And next, you're going to make your way down further to the diamond sanctuary. And you're going to want to avoid these slimes as best as you can. Um, especially the giant ones. <laughs> Alright, made it. Nice. Oh, geez, what happened here? Um, they're also pretty easy to kill, so if you have basically the, any starter weapon, you can probably take them. Now, if you don't have any weapons or armor, this is going to be a difficult place for you. So you need to run very carefully and make sure you talk to the lift operator so that you get your progress saved if you happen to die on your way down. This is the fastest way through the diamond area. Just be careful of the mobs. It only took me like four tries to get this right. Because I get lost very easily down here. And there we go. Now we're into the obsidian sanctuary. And this is where we want to go. So at this point, I would actually recommend uh, you avoid these mobs if you haven't, you know, gotten good combat gear. And if you talk to the lift operator, you can actually just go back to the hub, go back into the deep caverns. It's a bit of a hassle, but it's going to be less of a hassle than dying 30 times to these guys. And then you go back to the lift operator once it says, welcome to the uh, Obsidian Sanctuary. And then you can just hop to the lift operator and go back down. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, and the person you want to talk to is going to be right in front of you, and you won't really have to go to any mobs in order to talk to them. So we're gonna go to the lift operator, we're gonna teleport to the Obsidian Sanctuary, and this guy, we're gonna to wanna to talk to this guy right here. Now that we've hit mining level 12, if we talk to Riss again, he'll ask for three of the following, enchanted redstone, iron, coal, emerald, lapis, diamond, and or gold. Now, again, if you're on a bazaar enabled profile, this is very easy. You just go to the bazaar and you buy these things um, because it's gonna be way faster than you mining for them at this point. Okay, we are back at risk. We have the enchanted materials he wanted. We're going to give them to him. Yes, here you go. Here's 10 redstone and the... Oh, he took them all. Okay. Congratulations, you have now entered the Dwarven Mines. Wow. Congratulations, you have now entered the Dwarven Mines. This is the best place to get mining XP. The first time you talk to Risk to get there, after that you talk to the Lift Operator. So then you're going to be in the Dwarven Mines. Um, now, at this point, if you are a non-Iron Man, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you buy and enchant a Picanimbus from the Auction House. Um, and you also buy a rare or higher Silverfish, because this is going to allow you to get Mining XP much, much, much faster. Um, and it's going to cost you about 300 to 500k in total. Um, I promise you it's worth it. Um, it's better to spend the time making that money and then mining than just mining if you can. Obviously, if you're an Iron Man, it's a different story. And hopefully you're not in this part of the video. And so you're going to get these things. If you have tons of extra money, you can even buy a God Potion for bonus XP. I'm going to assume that you don't have that much money, but that's another option as well. Okay, if you're watching this part of the video, then you're on a non-Bazaar enabled profile, so you don't have access to the Bazaar. And that's going to change the best way to get mining XP, because in order to access the better methods, you're going to need to actually do some mining in the early portion, whereas the Bazaar people can just skip uh, a step using sand. So the way you're going to do it is you're going to talk to this mine merchant first, and you're going to buy a promising pickaxe. Now, you can pretty easily get this um, money for this by just breaking some wheat at spawn. 
and you're going to take this promising pickaxe and you're going to take it to these coal mines here and you're going to mine coal and or cobble until you get to mining level one at mining level one you should immediately go to the gold mine unlike its name it actually has higher densities of coal iron and gold and you're going to talk to the iron forger fellow here and buy an iron pickaxe this is going to have uh, smelting touch one and some breaking power this is perfect for your needs so at this point you can do the lazy miners quest if you do or don't want to but really what's important is you are going to mine iron and you're going to mine gold and you can even mine coal here in fact i would probably recommend mining coal if you're focused on just mining levels um, because you'll need it later so you're going to mine these things until you hit mining level five at mining level five you get access to the deep caverns which have an even higher density of ores so I would highly recommend going to the deep caverns. Now, once you arrive at the deep caverns, you are going to need to obtain 10 enchanted coal. Now, you can, you can do it uh, instead of coal, you can do iron or gold. Um, I feel that coal has the highest density, so it's a little easier than iron and gold, but it's up to you. Um, and there's just going to be uh, coal, iron, and gold kind of in this floor here. Um, and you can do whichever one you want, but you need 10 enchanted of at least one of them, if not all three. But I would actually recommend that for the others, you go for 10 enchanted uh, coal, iron, or gold, and then 10 enchanted lapis in this portion of the cave, and then 10 enchanted redstone in the next portion of the cave. But I would actually be very careful with the redstone, and you're going to need to mine it in the place that I show you, unless you can handle the redstone pigment. So this is going to be how you get to the redstone cave. And I wouldn't kill the pigmen if you don't have gear. And I would not uh, touch the redstone here in this particular part of the cave. Um, I would wait until you are past the pigmen zone itself. And this is going to be where you're going to want to mine redstone, kind of in this stairwelly area here. So you do this until you have 10 enchanted coal, 10 enchanted uh, redstone, 10 enchanted lapis and or 10 enchanted iron and or gold. So you need three of the five. Um, you could also do enchanted diamond or emerald, but those are gonna be slower in my opinion by a lot. So those are, you're gonna want three of those five. And then you're gonna make your way down through the slime hill. And again, be wary of slimes unless you have gear. And make your way down into the diamond area and here you're going to want to mine at least three diamonds in order to be able to get a diamond pickaxe and you're going to want to avoid these mobs like the plague unless again you have gear which i'm going to assume you don't so you're going to make your way through here you're going to make your way to the obsidian sanctuary right here and then once you unlock access to the obsidian sanctuary and you have three diamonds and you have 10 enchanted of three of those five materials, you are ready to go to the next step. Now, please be aware that again, if you're an iron man, um, this is going to be slower for you than it would be for someone with a bizarre enabled profile, but that's kind of the idea of iron man. So once you've unlocked that obsidian sanctuary, you want to go back to the hub, go back into the deep, talk to the lift operator, and go to the Obsidian Sanctuary, because this will take you to a different part of it. Then you're gonna talk to this guy, Riss. He's gonna say, hey, are you mining level 12? You're gonna be like, yeah, what's up, dude? Um, if you don't hit mining level 12 from getting the enchanted amounts of all of those mining materials, then you can go ahead and check out the first portion of this guide and get further mining levels by mining sand, would be my recommendation, because that'll be faster than mining any of the ores. But I think you'll hit level 12 without that. But if you don't, please go ahead and mine sand till you hit 12. And then you take those enchanted materials, you talk to Riss, and he's going to allow you access to the Dwarven Mines. So you're going to be at the Dwarven Mines now. You're going to have three diamonds, and you're going to be able to make a diamond pickaxe. So if you're an Iron Man at this point, I would recommend going to your island and making an Iron Pickaxe. And then getting uh, some gold coins about 4,000 or so should do and enchanting that pickaxe with 
efficiency level five and fortune three if you can. Uh, I don't know if you can do fortune three uh, without using your own enchanting table on your island, but you can definitely do efficiency five here and that's really the big one that you're gonna need. So you're gonna get a diamond pickaxe, you're gonna enchant it with efficiency five, and you're gonna go back to the dwarven mines. And now the guide becomes the same for both Iron Men and non-Iron Men. Um, the unfortunate difference is that Iron Man is going to be a lot slower because you're not going to have access to a Pico Nimbus, which is going to make things way easier. But you chose Iron Man, so yeah. One very important thing to note for Iron Man specifically is that you won't be able to do titanium commissions unless you buy a pickaxe with a higher breaking power than the diamond pickaxe. Um, so the way you do that is you talk to this guy, boo -boo, and you buy a fractured mithril pickaxe, which is going to cost you 10,000 coins. You can enchant it just like the diamond pickaxe. In fact, I would recommend doing that to save yourself some time, uh, because titanium is very uh, important for being able to complete commissions. The most important place to go here is to start by going to the kings. So we're gonna walk over to the kings here and they're gonna give us tasks. Now these tasks, especially for your first few tasks of the, each day, are going to award a lot of mining experience. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So this is definitely the fastest way to get mining XP, especially at this point. Now there are some methods where you can put in a lot of investment and get some mineral armor, but generally speaking, if you're early in the game, you just want to talk to this king and you want to get tasks from him. Hello, yes, welcome, you can meet all the kings, fantastic. So the first commissions are always going to be the same, they're always going to be, you know, mine some uh, mithril ore, participate in some event, and the commission slots are going to be different depending on how far along you are, you can get a, more slots, but the first one is always going to be some kind of mining task, the second one is going to be some kind of um, event task, and then three is also going to be mining and four is going to be event. You can participate in the events if you want, I don't really recommend it, um, except for those um, XP giving events because you're going to be a little weak um, for any of the combat ones and the other ones you're not probably not going to be able to mine fast enough to get what's needed. But the point is that you want to participate in these events for the commissions and otherwise it's fine. So now what are you going to do here? Well you want to mine this. This stuff is mithril and mithril comes in a lot of different shapes and forms. Um, you'll see there's like a gray wool, a gray concrete, and these prismarine and blue blocks. Now the prismarine and blue blocks are not worth it because they are going to be incredibly slow for you to break, as you can see. And they're going to give you 45 XP. Now, if you mine these blocks, they're much faster to break, and they're also going to give you 45 XP. There is an event in the mines that's called gone with the wind, where if you point in the right direction, you'll mine even faster. Now that is amazing, because that will give you very fast XP. Now here, this is where your pick and nimbus really comes in handy. As you can see, we mine very fast, and we get 45 XP per mine. So this is going to be our fastest possible way to mine uh, things and to get XP. So. This is going to be my recommendation to get to mining level 20 as fast as possible, is to use the pick and nimbus and mine mithril and to do commissions as they come up. So you'll see that we're going to go ahead and go to the king as we finish this commission in basically a few seconds. And we're going to go ahead and claim that XP and it's going to give us a whole mining level um, almost immediately. So the fastest way to get to mining level 20 is going to be to use this pick a nimbus. Uh, you can also enchant it with efficiency to get it a little bit faster. Enchant it with fortune to get a little bit more mithril, which sells for a pretty decent amount. Um, to the NPC, actually, which is what's fun about it. And that's really it. There's a, you know, there's a couple of things that I would mention before we finish. 
So we're going to talk to the king, we're going to get our bonus XP, and boom, mining level 13. We also picked up a taming level because, well, why not? Um, and we now are going to have a new commission, which is going to be to mine titanium. Now titanium has a small chance of appearing whenever you mine mithril. However, what's really fun is people will sometimes mine mithril and leave the titanium behind. So if you go to the mithril mines where we were just at, you grab your pick a nimbus because otherwise you can't break titanium um, unless you buy a, a different pickaxe with a breaking power of at least five. You can see that there are these white diorite blocks here. This is titanium. We got lucky. We're going to go ahead. We're going to break two and we are finished another commission. We're going to go back and get another 8k XP and some heart of the mountain XP, which is very nice for progressing in mining. Um, this is going to be kind of a total game changer in how mining works. You don't just mine ores. You want to like specifically progress in this heart of the mountain so that you can unlock perks so that you can be able to get way better at mining and i'll eventually make a guide for that but not in the near future because that's kind of like a long grind sort of thing so there we go and now we're going to have you know larger tasks that are going to require us to mine a lot more mithril but it's still worth it so fortunately we've got it gone with the wind event happening um, and there are some mods that will allow you to see which direction the wind is blowing otherwise you can kind of rotate and figure out how which way it is and it'll give you plus 600 mining speed now if you have a pick and nimbus you're pretty much okay without you know taking advantage of this event but if you don't you're gonna want to really make sure so for example you see my wind compass in the right that's my mod that's telling me that if i point this way i'm gonna break the blocks a lot faster so I'm using my diamond pickaxe now, and it looks about as fast as the pick and nimbus, or well, at least much faster. However, if I face the opposite direction, you'll see that there's a huge difference in mining speed. So that's a great event if you're an Iron Man and you, you know, don't have access to a pick and nimbus off the bat, then you can go ahead and use that in order to um, be able to get mining XP super fast, both from the commissions that you complete and from the mithril itself. One other piece of advice that I would give is that completing these commissions will give you heart of the mountain XP. So if you do slash H-O-T-M or go through the menu, you'll find your heart of the mountain. And I would recommend getting mining speed uh, and then you have to go to mining fortune and then titanium and sanium in order to give you a higher chance of obtaining titanium while you're breaking mithril. So I would probably split your um, mithril powder between these two things, mining speed and titanium and sanium. Now you might think, oh, I should save it up for later, but really uh, you, you can reset this every 24 hours um, and it doesn't cost like a crazy amount. So I would recommend to split between mining speed and titanium and sanium for now, and then you can reset it and do other things once you hit higher levels of Heart of the Mountain. All right, so just to make sure you know that I'm not selling you on some baloney nonsense, I'm going to go ahead and use this method in order to get uh, mining XP and see exactly how far and how fast it gets me. So we're going to go ahead and do the events, and I'm going to use an enchanted pick a nimbus that I have, um, efficiency 5, fortune 3, nothing fancy, and we're going to see how fast we can get mining levels. One of the great advantages of the Pick and Nimbus is that it counts as a great weapon against Ice Walkers, which take more damage from pickaxes than from actual weapons, and it does not use any of the durability. And Ice Walkers are a mob that may be one of the quests or the commissions that you receive. Alright guys, so I skipped ahead through a bunch of pretty mindless mithril mining, and it took me approximately 80 minutes from the point when I started counting. So in other words, I didn't count like kind of mining level 1 through 12. I didn't count the time it took to make the pickaxe and all that. But from around 12, 13-ish or from that first and second commission up to mining level 20, it took me 80 minutes. So overall put together, it's going to be about two hours to go from mining level one to mining level 20 using the methods outlined in this guide. Let's go ahead and find out how much money we made from doing all that. So if we go to the adventure, he's gonna be the one we're gonna sell our mithril to. But 100K, that's not too bad. Um, titanium, we're gonna go ahead and sell as well. 
27k worth of titanium. We got one goblin egg, which is about 10k. And we were lucky and actually got a glassite duel, which is always basically going to sell for 100k. So we made about 200k using this, and we spent about 350k on the pick of Nimbus. Um, looks like you could get it for 250k if you got lucky. But basically, it's going to cost you some money, but not actually as much as you might think, because you are going to make some of it back from using that pick of Nimbus. All right, guys, so that's kind of the summary of how to get mining level 20. Please uh, like and subscribe, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks. Bye.